Good morning and welcome to our midweek service. It's wonderful that you can join us. Already a few familiar faces on the live stream. If you're finding this service for the first time, you're through to the parish of Jarrell and Simonside and we are the people of the churches of St John's, St Paul's, St Peter's in Jarrell and St Simon's in Simonside, South Shields. You are very welcome to join us, no matter where you are. So Lent is not very far away, but we find ourselves in the season of ordinary time. And many of our readings at this time reflect the glory of creation, that wonderful gift and we'll have a reading this morning from the book of Genesis. But let's just pause for a moment as we begin to worship. As I welcome you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Space now to think, to reflect, to examine our own hearts as we have our prayers of penitence. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. The response to our prayers are, and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. And in your mercy, forgive us and help us. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, and if, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And our comment prayer. Almighty God, 
give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so our first reading this morning is from the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 20. That's where we begin. If you have your Bible at home and prefer to follow that way. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind and God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Another account of the creation. 
in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning, our responsorial psalm, is Psalm 8, and the refrain is, O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your force to silence the enemy and the avenger. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? O oh Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. All sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Time now for our Gospel reading and our reading this morning is from the Gospel of St Mark chapter 7 beginning at verse 1 if you'd like to follow with your Bible at all. Alleluia, Alleluia, the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord is the good news we announced to you. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The tradition of the elders. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. They do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honours me with their lips, yet their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. 
you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honour your father and mother. And whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is Corban, that is an offering to God, then you no longer permit doing anything for a father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I do have a short thought for the day. Let me share it with you. Now, growing up in the 1970s, I still remember our first colour television and watching the different public information films. And I can still remember those films today. Films like Charlie Says You Shouldn't Play With Matches. Still absolutely relevant today. We should never play with matches. Do you remember that one, the little boy and his cat? But we couldn't understand what the cat said, but the boy with Charlie the cat did. And I think he, the cat made some, oh, I don't know if I can still do it. I used to be able to do it. Do you remember that one? This cat would be in the background. Charlie says, you shouldn't play with matches. You should never play with matches. And there was the one I was laughing about this the other day because I could almost remember it word for word. There was one where um, this girl's going to the beach and she said, oh, Dave's wonderful, Dave's beautiful, Dave can do anything. And she says, come on, Dave, let's swim, I say. And the bottom line was he couldn't swim. And at the end, I remember a lady saying, learn to swim, young man, learn to swim. Still good advice today. I wonder how many of you can remember that one. Give us a thumbs up if you can. I might be the only one walking around with this still in my head. The one I was thinking about this morning, actually, was the one with the grumpy dad. I remember him as being grumpy. And he was always telling his little boy, probably about my height at the time, to use the subway to use the subway, they lived on a busy road. But the grumpy dad, when he was on his own, always crossed the busy road. There was something in there, and I don't know if it was said verbally or something I picked up later. Do as I say, not as I do. Do as I say, not as I do. And looking back, he was a bossy and a grumpy dad. Making rules for one and doing another. So this all came flooding back to me when I was sitting with our gospel reading for today. So the scribes and the Pharisees have come out of Jerusalem. They've left Jerusalem to come to where Jesus is. And it's almost as if, are they fishing? Are they looking for a reason, reason. Are they looking for something that's not right? They're watching the disciples very closely. And I think one of the first phrases there, the way they're talking about the disciples, might make us think that their hands are very dirty and that they haven't washed them at all. But I don't think we can make that assumption because they could well have wiped their hands or cleaned their hands quickly. I think what they haven't done is cleaned their hands 
to the stringent, high standard demanded of the tradition of the elders, which includes the position of the hands, how you wash each hand with the other, and how you rinse them, the water is carefully poured over them. I have to say that the traditions that were being imposed on people by the scribes and the Pharisees, when we think that Moses had ten commandments, they now stretch to hundreds. One book I was reading said over 600 rules and regulations in the tradition of the elders. And we know Jesus himself, why he didn't come to replace the law, spoke of the commandments in two ways. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbour as yourself. So to me this morning, the Pharisees come across like the grumpy dad in that short 1970s film. Perhaps it's a human thing, perhaps it's easier to follow human rules that are clearly set out and concrete, tangible, definite, precise. And when it comes to faith, is it easier to follow rules rigidly than to enter an unknown landscape of opening ourselves up as individuals to the wonder and goodness of God's grace? To do as Jesus did, following the example he gave. Because in Jesus, we find our true teacher. We can do what he does and we can do what he says. Just thinking of one strand this morning. We can welcome all people. Often we find Jesus alongside people, the scribes and the Pharisees, would never go near to. Their rules and regulations forbade it, perhaps. But Jesus would be with the multitude, the masses, the fallen woman, the crooked tax collector. The list goes on. And he shared the good news with everyone. He shared his teaching with everyone and he had quite a collection of apostles too didn't he not necessarily those who would have been selected by the scribes and pharisees but people out there in the communities where they lived and they left everything and followed him i don't think the rules and regulations imposed on people in that day inspired people. It may have felt safe, but I'm not sure it inspired their hearts and set them on fire. As the teaching of Jesus did. So in Jesus we have found our true teacher. Someone who doesn't say one thing and do another but someone who is constantly seeking to do the will of the Father. And we too can do that individually, as a congregation, as a wider parish. And we can trust the word of Jesus, for it's the Father in him, God within him. It is the word also of God. So today, we might like to think of some of the traditions we follow, not necessarily in church, or it might be in church, or it might be in our family, or it 
let's face it, so many of our regular patterns and traditions have been turned upside down, cancelled, postponed, put on hold. And I wonder if some of those traditions may not be as helpful as we thought they were. Certainly the Pharisees think every single 600 and something rule, regulation, tradition of the elders must have been followed. So today we might want to think about our family traditions, our community traditions, our faith traditions. I just wonder why they are important to us and how do they speak to us today? of who we are as individuals, as family members, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let me know if you want to have a chat about that at any time. Amen. We're going to have um, our second hymn now, Fairest Lord Jesus. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light.
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Time now for our prayers. There will be a, a time of silence for you to add your own prayers. So let's begin. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, we thank you for bringing us to this new day and for all that is good in our lives. For memories we treasure, for our shared lives together. We thank you for our health and care workers, our key workers, our schools, our families and children. We thank you for the many blessings that surround us each day. If only we had eyes to see and hearts to know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we know there are so many things wrong in our world too. We pray this morning for anyone suffering directly or indirectly because of the pandemic. We pray for anyone who is struggling with lockdown. We pray for people who find themselves in dark, difficult or even violent places and we pray for everyone struggling financially at this time we pray for people with nothing beyond furlough we pray for people struggling to find work For business owners desperately trying to save their livelihood. We pray for all who feel they may be drowning in debt or despair today. We ask Lord that you strengthen them that you bring them your hope and reassurance that this storm too will pass and through all the changes 
since the beginning of time. You have remained our constant, our rock and our redeemer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church around the world, Lord. Globally, we pray for your church in this country and locally. Praying for our parishes, wherever we are gathered today. We give you thanks for all who lead. Thinking this morning of <clears throat> Her Majesty the Queen, our Archbishops Justin and Stephen, our diocesan bishops from wherever we are gathered. So here in Durham Diocese, we pray for Bishop Paul, Bishop Sarah, their assistant bishops and their leadership team. And in the parish of Jarrow and Simonside, we pray for all who lead, lay and ordained, all who step up and play a part or hold us all in prayer, supporting from a distance. Help us to know and remember, Lord, we are each precious in your sight. We are each able to offer the gift you have placed deep within us. Be with all who lead, all discerning vocation, all churches discerning your will. And just beginning to imagine what might lie ahead for your church once this storm has passed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are suffering at this time, in mind, body or spirit. We pray for those who care for them. And in this parish today, we pray for John Ellison, Jessica McCaskill, Carrie Waggett, Betty Connor, Doreen Moig, Andrew Garvick, Mrs Hewitt, Sid Harrison, Pat Middleton, Dorothy Macbeth, Stella Matthews, Michael Hughes, Chris Haynes, Margaret Errington, Tom Mackenzie, Julie, Josh, Pat Henshaw, John Pike, Ann Taylor, Rod Taylor, Carol Woodfield, Christine, Beatrice Yorston, Wynne Alderslade, Marion, Judith and Jen, Grant and Sheena, Gillian, Karen Hill, Reverend Stuart Hill, John Young, Minnie Johansson, Mavis, Jamie, Harriet Fraser, Grant Macbeth, Susan Fisher, Ruth Banks, Nathan and James Shepherd. And in a time of silence, Lord, we lift to you those peoples and situations that are on our hearts today.
May they know your healing presence, your comfort and your peace. And loving God, we pray for those who are very seriously ill today. We pray for patients in intensive care, palliative care, or at home with loved ones. We pray for devastated families, separated, held at a distance at this critical time. And we pray for anyone for whom today may be their last day in this place. Trusting that you, Lord, will welcome them home with open arms to their heavenly home, to your house with its many dwelling places. And may your Holy Spirit comfort all who are grieving at this time. Mindful also of families with memorial about now. We entrust into your care, Lord, all of those we love but no longer see. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Time now for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So thank you for being with me today. Um, I don't know if you could remember some of those public service announcements I was talking about from the 70s. I'm certainly going to be thinking of some of the, the ways in which perhaps I do things or our family does and what have you. And it may well be that, you know, church, it feels as if the church, the church, the wider church, is going through a time of real change. Um, so let's just hold all of that in prayer, actually. Let's hold that in prayer for our churches and our congregations and our parish here and from wherever we are gathered. It's, 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 it's important we seek God in the midst of all of this. So let's continue to pray. Our next service on this Facebook page will be morning prayer tomorrow at 8 o'clock with me. And then our 10 o'clock midweek worship is with Reverend Stuart. So I'm sure you'll want to be here and welcome him back via the, the comments and the live stream. So it's great that he's back here. And I have to say, Jackie is just, I think she deserves a blue Peter badge. She just carries on 
carries on, carries on. We might have to make up uh, our own little something for you, Jackie. But thank you. You are such a blessing. Time now for us to either remain at home, pop out briefly, go back to work if you're on a tea break. So whatever you are doing, let me send you on with God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And I'll just play one final hymn as you say your goodbyes to one another and hopefully see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.